In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. In Jesus, Mary, St. Joseph, and St. Teresa, pray for us. And St. Let's look here. St. Dominic of Silos, pray for us. He's good for pregnancies. And um, he was born in Spain. I'll have to read more about him. It says he was exiled. It looks like he was a bishop. So this is wonderful. I'm going to have to look at that soon. I want to also, I think I need to wash my glasses. I know I don't brush my hair in the morning, but, you know, it kind of takes a while to do. And sometimes I just don't, don't want to spend, waste a lot of time doing that right when I get up. So I'm just going to quickly wash my glasses. with just water because if it's got sticky stuff on the glasses and then you just wash with water or it's got little grains of sand and then you try to um, dry your glasses off you could actually scratch the lens so you kind of want to make sure that you use soap and that you get all that little bit of stuff off of there but even water has little grains in it you know especially tap water I just use tap water All right, let's just turn off some of the lights in here. And we'll be almost ready. Remember your holy face. <laughs> Don't go anywhere without it, believe me. I want to get across too. But I can't decide which ones to get. They've got all these different kinds of crosses. Now they've got a cross with the with the uh, twelve apostles on it, and they've got a our Lord on a bed of roses on a cross. And I look at all these, and then I can't decide. So then I just don't get a cross. But the best the best cross I have, or the best, is this uh, life uh, rosary from Holy Love. And it's got little babies in it. And every time you pray a Hail Mary, it is, saves a child. And this is, like, if I lost this, I would be upset kind of thing. So, I mean, they're kind of expensive. I wouldn't be upset if somebody found it and started using it. I'd be more upset because it is kind of a pricey purchase. But it has to be that way because of the way it's made. But Our Lady designed it. She's a designer. Isn't that wonderful? All the creativity that she does, and we just take her for granted, and we just don't even see it. She doesn't reveal it, though. She she's, she doesn't reveal it in, uh, well, she does. I mean, look at this. Wonderful. But our, you know, the, the tilma. You think our Lord dressed her? Did she kind of decide what she was going to wear that day? I don't know. Probably a little bit of both. Because our Lord, he loves, he loves working with people. And I didn't think that. Now that he's just a dictator God that wants to lord himself over us and punish us all the time. I think a lot of people feel that way, especially when their lives start to go downhill, even if they don't really do anything wrong. You know, they'll, they'll get canceled or they'll get thrown out of their house or like, you know, St. Uh, Aloysius Gonzaga did or jailed by their relatives and stuff or thrown into court systems. So, and then society just throws throws stones at you so you feel like you know well maybe I am just a train wreck or whatever but you know our Lord isn't like people our Lord doesn't do that he gives and he never stops giving I mean I've had visions where I'm just holding so many babies and stuff I don't know if they're spiritual children or maybe the children saved through the rosaries or um, maybe children I would have in the era of peace to come or whatever I that I do not know but I know that our Lord, he's not slack in giving. If you just want a relationship with him, he will pour out the blessings. Maybe not today or tomorrow, but he will pour them out today or tomorrow. We're just so stupid. We don't see it. He pours out the blessings instantaneously when you unite with him. It's instantaneous love. So if we don't 
I, ask, I often have to ask St. Francis of Assisi to help me see the beauty because when all you see is monster trucks and, you know, crazies driving around, you know, it can be really depressing. But i got to ask St. Francis of Assisi to show me the beauty in the area to open my eyes up because there's still a lot of beauty here. Nothing like the air of peace, beauty, or heaven. You know, after I sometimes take my Holy Communions, I look outside and everything, it's like I'm seeing black and white. I'm not seeing anything great because the vision was so, it had so much beauty in it. Like everything else looks like, uh, you know, unseasoned stale bread, so to speak. But it takes me a while to sort of readjust to the world. <laughs> sort of. But the world does have elements of the beauty of the era elements of the beauty of the era of peace in heaven if it did because it's made in god's likeness and image just like we are you know we're a little small fraction of what the the saint would be in heaven but the saint had you know they still keep some of their essences from when they were on earth they're not just completely reworked you know I mean, in a way they are, you know, like I said with the vision, in a way they are, but they keep, you know, the soul is here. The soul is here today in me. Now, as long as I'm breathing and alive, the soul is here. But we extend our, our, uh, we extend our thoughts to heaven and stuff, you know. We can see why God needs, our lady needs a massive amount of suffering right now because of the state of the world going in three days darkness and everything and uh she needs the more we pray the more we will experience suffering that's how it works because our lady will start to trust so to speak her children i don't have to use the word trust because people are, people are so finicky and we waver and have our faith from minute to minute second to second but uh she starts to trust and so she'll weigh down the cross because she wants to save souls okay and with our suffering, it's like music pouring out to Jesus, you know. The, he, Jesus and Mary will use that suffering to help actually save souls. It's kind of a mystery. It doesn't really make that much sense to me still. <laughs> it's kind of like, hmm. But, you know, unite yourself to the passion. We don't see the passion of, our, of Blessed Virgin. She hides that. But she's on the cross, too. She's suffering, too. She's bleeding out every last drop of her blood. Like I said, we should have a stage of the cross of Our Lady. You know that vision I have, her suffering on the cross, being pregnant. And this, the she was being crucified. And the soldier slashed through her womb, and out came Jesus on the cross, crucified. And I couldn't believe it. If anyone could suffer more than Our Lord, it, it surely would be Our Lady. Because for the pregnancy and the suffer, the suffering of her, seeing her son suffering, could if anybody could say be greater, it would be the mother's sorrow. You know, but I don't think she would allow me to say anyone could suffer more than our Lord. You know, but her faith, this is her face too. You know, but it's her face times two because she's this is her son. And how much more do we suffer when we see our children suffer? How much do we suffer when we see their spirit? suffer you know especially with the with the faith being so you know twisted around
but a lot of people are turning, uh, what do they call them, metrosexuals, or people, you know, you'll get married to someone, and they kind of start turning a little fruity on you, you know, and it, I think it's a society, Oregon, Washington, California, now coming to Idaho, but it's kind of been here for a while, and going as, now into Montana and stuff, just fruity men, you know, and especially priests and husbands. <laughs> it's like, this is so unattractive, you know? What is going on? That they want their women out working. They want to turn their women into men. And then they, they lust after each other. And that's exactly the Bayside prophecies right there. So if your spouse is turning gay, you know, tell them, you know? I know Adam, he's, he became a total fruit, you know? And he even advertises, you know, that, that he believes in certain things. Like homosexuality he advertises it it's gross you know so anyway uh Stay a man, okay? Become a man. It's so much more attractive, you know? Don't become fruity. And a lot of it is just outside influence of society. But it's definitely in the church, too. But there's also many other things. I mean, oh, my mom appears like a lesbian a lot, you know? And, and uh, she she got pro-yay, I'll say it, when, when she started working at a... Uh, uh, at this, a paging company in Federal Way. She instantly became pro yay. It's like once you get a woman out in the workforce, like they just become really, really uh, atheistic, secular. And I mean, that's, uh, you know, she's already into a bunch of bad stuff like, uh, you know, birth control and stuff before she even started, you know. Uh, so.
just get out of your situation with the hay fits and, uh, you know, my mother and father and stuff. Just get out of there, you know. You can go into foster care and just say, you know, just some of these videos and say, I want to be with my mom. And my mom welcomes me. She's ready to accept me. And that's where I want to be. Yeah, just tell them. Well, I don't. Say I'm a Roman Catholic. I'm a baptized Roman Catholic. I want to be with my mom. I want to be raised right. These people aren't doing their job, and I'm done with it, you know? smack about my mom for years trying to brainwash me you know and she's had to do online videos in order to connect with me and I'm done with it I want to back with my mom you know just say that <laughs> say they extorted my mom they made tons of money off of my mom you know through the court system and say I, you know and they try to hide that from me and I'm sick of it just, just say that after say I want to back with my mom and uh you know I don't want to see these type of people in my life ever again or these these quote-unquote grandparents you know just say you're done with it you're a baptized Roman Catholic and that's how it's going to be <laughs>
Yeah, foster care, actually. That's the, that's the thing you got to do. I hate to say it, you know, but, I mean, they're just, they're not raising you right. So you just, as soon as you can do it, you know, just go to one of the workers and say, I want to be put in a foster care, and then I want to be back with my mom, you know.